Energy is such an important part of our everyday lives. Without access to clean, affordable electricity and energy, you can't have the modern society that we have today. From electric vehicles to renewable energy to advanced computers, those technologies require the raw materials that we produce here at Energy Fuels. Energy drives just about everything. When you look at the various sources of energy, you, you really have to come up with the mix that fits the location. And nuclear is about 20% of the power grid in the United States. The key with nuclear power right now is this focus on reducing carbon emission. It's going to play a major role in solving the climate change problem. It's our largest source of carbon-free, emission-free electricity. It's also particularly important because it's baseload. It provides electricity 24-7, 365, no matter what the weather is doing and no matter what the sun is doing. There were natural formations of uranium all over the Four Corners region. And when the U.S. government decided they needed uranium, well, that's where the prospectors went. And that was really the beginning of the nuclear age for the nuclear fuel cycle. The uranium industry has really evolved over the last 50, 60, 70 years. In the early days, it was essentially a government-sponsored defense program. It was very lightly regulated. We didn't have a great understanding of a lot of the health impacts, the environmental impacts that could come from uranium mining. But a lot has changed over the last 70 years. Today's industry is extremely responsible. We've got a great record of environmental protection, regulatory compliance, worker safety. That's probably the biggest misconception that people have. People think things haven't changed in the last 70 years. Well, I'm here to tell you they have. Our company has the ability to do more than any other company I know to decarbonize and improve electrification. Nuclear is seeing a real renaissance within the United States. We're moving into advanced reactor technologies and small modular reactors, and all of those are going to need uranium for their fuel. Energy Fuels produces the raw materials that make many clean energy technologies possible. Uranium is the fuel for clean nuclear energy. Rare earth elements are the building blocks for a lot of clean energy technologies like electric vehicles, wind energy, batteries. We also produce vanadium, which is primarily used in steel, but it's also seeing a lot of interest in high capacity grid scale battery technologies. So Energy Fuels has an extremely unique role to play in this clean energy transition that we're in the midst of today. The Pinion Plain mine was discovered in the 1970s it's a really good uranium deposit. We have over two million pounds of uranium within the Pinion Plain mine ore body. That uranium is enough to power the entire state of Arizona for over a year, purely on carbon-free green energy. It has the equivalent amount of energy as would be contained in a train that had coal that stretched from Los Angeles all the way to New York and part of the way back again. The amount of electricity contained on this small 14-acre side of land is quite extraordinary. You're not going to have a green world without mining. The home you live in, the wall boards, the roads that you just drove on, every time you see a cement truck drive by, this is all product of mining. Everything you see around you, all of that was either mined or it was grown. So there is no getting around the need for mining. It can be done certainly in much more responsible and much cleaner ways than has been done in the past. And we are constantly working to make that happen. I take the responsibility to the land and the people very seriously. We do things right. We do things at high standards. The life cycle of a uranium mine is that the deposit is discovered. Then you have to go through and you have to permit that deposit for production. And that is a lengthy multi-year process through a whole host of federal and state agencies. Once it's in production, you mine until the deposit is depleted. And then once you're done mining, then you go into reclamation. And this is one of the huge differences between how mining is done today versus how it was done in the past. We have to go through and ensure that there's nothing left on the surface that would indicate that a mine operated there. You have to recontour the land and you have to revegetate it. And then you have a lot of post mining monitoring that has to happen to ensure that there's not something that pops up down the road. Once post-closure period is complete, we'll be able to return this land back to its former use and the public would be able to enjoy and recreate here and not know that this land was ever even operating as a mine. 
The White Mesa Mill is what's known as a conventional uranium mill. This is where ore from mines or other sources was processed and where the uranium is extracted and the impurities removed. We're also applying those same technologies and those same practices to the extraction of rare earth elements. There are rare earth element bearing ores that are mined around the world and nearly all of them are mildly radioactive because they contain small quantities of uranium and thorium and other radionuclides and those have to be removed from that ore before those rare earths can be sent on for further processing. And so that's why the White Mesa Mill is such an important piece of the rare earth supply chain here in the United States. There is truly no other facility anywhere in North America like the White Mesa Mill with the capabilities, the licenses, and the expertise that we have at that facility. I've worked here for 10 years and I stayed here that long because I love the area and it's about the best job in the area. I grew up on the reservation and then I moved up here to Blanding. So there's a lot of people in our county that have worked here that means a lot to our county. For me, it's pretty much home. Most of the guys that I work here is like family to me. We have a team of people down at the White Mesa Mill that I, I just cannot speak more highly of. They are professional, they are knowledgeable, they are committed to safety and environmental protection. It's a, it's a great team that we have both at the mill and also throughout the entire company. We try to do things right, not only environmentally, but also safety-wise. The last thing anybody wants to do is get hurt and not go home. We take great pride in ensuring that everything that comes to the mill stays at the mill and everything that leaves is something that we allow to leave. We monitor our tailing on a daily basis to make sure that we are taking care of the environment and the people who live here. Our company is made up of a lot of people and I want them to feel that they're part of something that is extraordinary. Uranium's been around for a while, and that's what we've done for a long time. But when you look at like the rare earth elements for the high efficiency electric motors, like neodymium, praseodymium, dysposium, terbium, those are elements that assist in making the most powerful magnets that use the least amount of energy to propel things. That's the new part of this space, and this is the exciting part of it. Energy Fuels is focused on a particular mineral called monazite. And monazite is extremely important when it comes to uh, rare earth uh, element production because it's very high in the particular rare earths you need for electric vehicles and, and wind energy in particular. But the problem for most companies is that monazite is mildly radioactive. You need special licenses, you need special capabilities and special expertise in order to process the monazite, extract the uranium and other radionuclides, and also extract the rare earth elements and send those down for further processing on the rare earth supply chain. And the White Mesa Mill in Utah is the only facility in the United States capable of performing that role. The newest thing on the table for our company is looking at these isotopes that are now the focus of some modern cancer treatments when you look at these new technologies that are in for approval by the FDA, they're more powerful. They're more selective. They do less damage. This industry is fascinating. There is never a dull moment. The challenges are constant, but they're exciting. And it's exciting to try to overcome some of those challenges. Right now we rely on international sources for the uranium and we hope to be a major supplier of domestically produced uranium. We're trying to restore that processing technology and the ability to produce these advanced rare earth materials here in the United States. Our goal is to reshore these critical elements in the United States of America, reduce dependence on Russia and China, and at the same time, do this responsibly at the highest standards possible. We want to do extraordinary things.